Hi, and welcome to Notes from the Center. My name is David Lefevre, and I'm the Education Coordinator at the Meadow Valley Interpretive Center. Today we're going to learn a little bit about seasons of the people. We'll talk about what seasons are in this area, the names in the native Inzalchin language, and learn a little bit about pollination. First, the word for spring. Skipchen. Skipchen. And the words for the months that are occurring right now are for March, Skaniramen, time of the buttercups, and Pachkhtan, time of the leaves budding. Now these don't correspond exactly to our months of March and April, but were tied more directly to what was actually happening. So times of the buttercup blooming, which might be late February to now, and time of the first leaves budding, which is very much happening right now in the month that we call April. We're going to learn a little bit about pollination strategies for some of the plants that are flowering right now. So first I want to introduce you to a generalist pollination strategy. We're going to take a look at the arrowleaf balsam root. Now the arrowleaf balsam root, depending on the part of the plant, has several different names in the native language. The one I want to share with you today is miktu. And miktu are the seeds which were collected by shaking the plant and then roasting either out in the hot sun or on dry rocks and then were mashed up and used later. Now the reason why I'm focusing on that word is that there are some sources that say that the name for our valley, Metau, which really comes from the name of the people which was metu, may come also from miktu, which are the seeds for the balsam root. So the arrowleaf balsam root is in the aster family, and asters are pollination generalists. So let's take a look at an aster at the balsam root. What I mean by pollination generalist is that basically any old pollinator and pollinators are things like bumblebees, native bees, honeybees, butterflies, flies, beetles. So any old insects can pollinate these. We want to compare that to a pollination specialist like the shooting star. Now the shooting star in the native language is called which roughly corresponds to, or directly corresponds to, curlew beak. So while we call it a shooting star, you can imagine why Native Americans might have called it curlew beak. Curlew being a, a, a bird. So this one is really interesting. In order to get pollen out of that, the pollinator needs to shake it. And it's basically like a salt shaker. There are little holes which the pollen comes out of. And so what happens here is that a bumblebee flies up, grabs on, vibrates its wings at approximately 250 cycles per second, and the pollen shakes out like a salt shaker. So 250 cycles per second, if you have a piano at home, go and hit middle C. Those are one and the same. So imagine the buzz pollination that's going on with this specialist pollination flower. What I think is really fascinating with generalist and specialist pollinators is that there's really no one right way to live. There are many strategies for success. So in this case, success being reproduction, success meaning getting pollen transferred to another flower. And as we can see here between the shooting star and the arrowleaf balsam root, there are many right ways to do this. Now one of the things I want to end with today, pardon me, I'm going to be reading off of a computer screen, is the seasons of the people. And this is a description of what the seasons were like for the native peoples here, the Metu people, from Matilda Tilly Taiman Twa Gore. And I'm going to read her words because that's the right way to do it. 
Native people were nomadic and traveled following their food sources, gathering food and preparing it for the winter months. They had use for everything. Waste was not known to native people. Each item from the plants or the animals had purpose for their survival. Our people did things in cycles throughout the year. There was a particular thing that needed to be done at a particular time. If you did not follow this cycle, you would not survive the harsh winters and may perish for not being prepared. January is the time of north wind, the time to repair and make new supplies for the following year. The children had this time for their depth schooling. This was the only time these stories and legends were told. Elders would say you did not talk about the spirits when they were awake. Only when they were asleep could you talk about them. February, or March, is the time of the buttercup. We know spring is coming and need to make last minute repairs to be ready. March is when the sunflowers appeared. Excuse me. The shoots and bulbs were eaten raw after blooming. The seeds were gathered and put into a pounder, which was then made into a powder. This we called miktu. This was used to flavor food, and if eaten alone, you had to sit very still or one could choke on this fine dust. March is also known when the leaves start to bloom on the trees. Starting with the months of March through April, after a long and sometime very hard winter, the Indians hunted for bear just coming out of hibernation. This was the time the bear was said to still be in pretty good shape. This would be only overnight trips, but they usually did not need overnight trips for brown and black bear. The bear was trapped with deadfall traps. The last part of April, they trapped for suckers that were running at that time. This was located just below Oroville at the falls in the canyon. The families would gather and work traps. Today they call this location McLaughlin Canyon, located about 20 miles south of Oroville coming toward Riverside. The traps were worked for about two or three weeks, getting enough to last them until the salmon started running in the month of June. Steelhead trout was caught in the sand poil, Keller, Washington, and from there the Indians traveled to Kettle Falls for the salmon camps. These camps were run by salmon chiefs, who were the ones who kept the peace. By April and May, the families who were left at the winter homes would then leave for the Bitterroot country some would go to the Camas lands and dig for their root supply. These are the most popular roots dug in the prairies. One could also hunt marmots there. In the spring, they gave their first food feasts with the first roots dug and the roots were then given away to all in those ceremonies. First salmon feasts were also done after the first salmon was caught as they came back to the rivers. All bands had their ways for these ceremonies and we try and teach others to remember how you were taught by your parents. There was no wrong way. Everyone is taught by a family member, whether it be the parents, grandparents, or a relative. June through July, they continued digging for camas in the camas lands. Many went to the Wenatchee Valley. They watched for the white blossoms of the camas plant and also watched for the blue flowers of Itwa, or the dark camas. Other plants were wild carrots, wild potato, wild onions, tiger lily, cattail, wild celery, and pine nuts. Some berries that ripened early were gathered. Service berry, or siya, was the main berry. The early berries were gathered and dried and sometime pounded for flavor for other foods. My mother said the two kinds of blackberries were picked later in the summer. They picked wild raspberries, black raspberries, thimbleberries, elderberries, wild strawberries, wild loganberries, wild currants, rose hips, yellow coyote berries, thorn berries, foam berries, which was used to make Indian ice cream, choke cherries, and huckleberries. These foods were available during the months of June through October. All foods were taken back to their camps and processed. They also hunted for animals such as deer, bear, rabbit. The largest season for the different bands, the Wenatchee, Chelan, Eniat, Okanagan, Metau, and other bands east of us, was the running of the salmon. This also occurred during the months June through October. All summer camps were located around all the fishing places in the rivers where the salmon ran. July through August was fall time, gathering time for all Indians to give thanks to the Creator for all they had and had taken from the Mother Earth. Thank you for watching this and for continuing to love this place and this valley. Neem, neem.